project is the runes, uh, grounding in uh, northern magic. And uh, I've not just illustrated, but I've written it. Uh, but I thought I'd show how I illustrate it. You'll notice I'm, I'm quite, quite kind of loose and free, um, and I'm not sure that I'm particularly following any kind of a technique that I know of. Um, I'm, I'm just winging it. Um, and I'd say that was my, you know, if I have any tricks, that, that's definitely one of them. Wing it. I, you know, don't, don't come up with anything. Let it all happen. Uh, I use the rubber a lot as a result. badly drawn squirrel at the top of the page can go that was also defying physics um, and soon yes we have an eagle so the eagle at the bottom top can go as well and then we have a fruit um, there are 24 fruit because there will be 24 runes in it um, this picture is meant to be of a big drazzle and uh, the, the fruit will be runes and it's going on the idea that there was a section in my book that I uh, maybe needed an illustration and um, in that section I'm talking about how getting the runes to fit in with other systems is kind of risky because frequently things just don't fit together and um, as a result I wanted to have a picture with the runes all kind of jumbled up sort of thing not in the correct order that you think of them in because um, to be honest, the system is quite chaotic, and uh, one of the things that's slightly appealing about Norse, proto-Norse, and kind of Saxon culture is, is that it does allow for quite a lot of anarchy. Here you can see we're using a Byron now, and, you, and you, you'll, you'll see, you'll start to see that, that you know, like cross-hatching and stuff like that. Um, I do do it the traditional way, but I also do it any other way that I can think of. Um, you know, I, I, I see that as kind of free texture. Uh, and, you know, one weird thing with this picture was is that because I've got the camera there and because of the way I'm, I'm sitting, normally when I do a picture, yeah, it's like the Kama Sutra, I'll, you know, I'll be jumping all over it. Uh, whatever. Just kind of... Uh, Wherever I want the book to be, I can I can have it. And in this one, I had to keep it still for the camera, which actually made it really quite a challenge. I like mucking about with with hatching. Uh, doesn't doesn't need to be done by a suit. As can also be said about most of this, uh, if I haven't already mentioned it, the, kind of the, the not work is uh, I go out of my way to break it, and I certainly don't go out of my way to keep it symmetrical or particularly kind of geometrically. In fact, if you look at it, I've even gone to the effort of making sure that it doesn't make a square. Um, kind of is, you know, suggesting that it's got a frame around it, but no, oh, it's broken.
think one thing that the pictures get across is is the anarchy that is the system that I'm describing. Um, you know, down below there, I'm, I'm doing, you know, that must be called a, uh, a Celtic knot, yet it's not Celtic and it's not a knot, it's like diamond-shaped rings with a loop going through it. I, I've not even kind of continued the form, which is, you know, the kind of bread and butter of that kind of knot work. Uh, uh, tonally, I leap from, from very light to very dark, probably a bit too eagerly. You know, there's, there's some mid-toners that I could be playing with there. Even, you know, obviously cross-hatching is light or dark, as I was mentioning earlier, but... Uh, here definitely you know I like it I like it bold I like it strong They're not in an order, you know. Like I said, I'm, I'm saying, <laughs> I'm saying chaos, and uh, I think it's almost finished now. A bit more work on the knolls, and I stick into the last moment and a kind of loomy shape. Just a moment, we should see the last thing I do, which is in Photoshop where I spread out the contrast um, so it's just light and dark I've lost even more mid-tone and it's kind of finished and what about the writing I hear you ask pretty much the same total chaos <laughs> <laughs> 